Hey, good morning, family. How are y'all doing today? Well, I have my wife again with me. And, and so, you know, I, I thought, the Lord told me, he said, Brandon, she's not to walk behind you. She's, walk, she's to walk beside you concerning things. And I want her on the broadcast more. I want her to come on and talk more. I want her to be a part more. Uh, because she has a lot inside of her. And, uh, you know, she's been in the, in the, in the background doing emails and things like that sometimes. And now, now we're homeschooling the kids and getting ready for this new school year. And it's a lot, but, but there is so much inside of her and I, and I want to hear more. And so I'm going to bring her on more and we're going to talk. So, but, 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 you know, the Lord told me, you know, a couple of days ago, I've, I've had some amazing visitations in the last two weeks, haven't I? In the last... I mean, it's, it's been the, the, the intensity of the river mm -hmm. has doubled on my life uh, with just the things the Lord is showing me. The prophetic pulse is what I want to call it. I, I'm so humbled that he, would, that he would come and visit me. But it, uh, it's for you all, a lot of it. And there he tells me and instructs me about my own life, things that I can't talk about. You know, I try to talk about people and they say, well, you're bragging. And I go, no, I'm just telling you what the father said. But I, I've realized that I, there's a lot of things I just keep quiet now, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's like I'm learning myself, you know. I'm learning. This whole thing has just been like a, a fire hydrant just shot right at me. And, um, and the Lord said, Brandon, you can't talk about some of this stuff. And I realized there's some of the things he's showing me. I, I think, well, I, you tell it to me so I can talk about it. And, he, and he's like, no, I'm telling that for you. It's for you to pray over and it's for, for you personally. And so uh, I'm learning, you know. I'm a work in progress. That's what I keep telling y'all. But, um, you know, Diane and I both, we're just we're, we're grabbing on with both fingers and our teeth. <laughs> going, we're not letting go. We're going to keep holding on here and, and fight through this thing. And, uh, but you know, but I just want to, you know, people want to know how's Megan doing? How, what's her progress and everything? And I want to tell y'all, she's getting better and better. We believe, you know, like I said, a miracle is a miracle, even if it's progressive. Because what the doctor said, she would never be any different. The doctor said she'd always stay at a five-year-old level the rest of her life or less. Was it five? Uh, two and a half. Two and a half. Two and a half year mental capability of a two and a half year old. I always say five. I'm believing God, man. We're going up if we have two <laughs> five-year-old. Huh? But um, she's come a long ways. But but we still got a long ways to go. Even the people they know and they see her at church, or whatever. But. But, but 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 what I'm trying to say is is that for the, for the first time and for a long and in, in, in years and years and years we're able to go to church as a family and not have to just watch online because of the distraction that she had been in in public because it used to be the ushers would have us leave because she would be so disrupt disruptive and for the first time we were able to go to church as a family and, and uh, sit in the back and, and pray for the people. And it's been such a blessing. But they're having a prayer conference in Branson, Missouri. Uh, his mama is, um, Sister Billy Brim. She's going to be having a prayer conference in October. And I, I think it would be wonderful you all support her. I think, you know, the Lord showed me a great move of God that's coming for, for that area. And I've told you all about it. Great signs and wonders is coming to Branson, Missouri. And the Lord told me, he said, it's going to start with Billy Brim. And he told me, he said, Brandon, I said, why, Lord, why are you going to use her? He said, because she prays for it. She's asked me over and over and over, over and over and over for a, for a move of my presence. And he said, son, I'm going to honor those prayers. That It's coming. And I saw a glory cloud, a glory cloud. And everybody said, what's that? I'm talking about a, like a fog a massive, like a fog, a thick fog. A presence of the Lord comes in like a fog, like it did in the Old Testament. Glory. That gets me excited. <laughs> I, get, awesome. I get excited too because it's going to happen. Uh, so and I saw a glory cloud come in. Mm -hmm. And when she's doing prayer at one of her prayer conferences, I don't know if it's this year, but I anticipate it every time because we've never been able to go. We watch online. 
And um, I've always said, Lord, please, if it happens, I'm getting in the car and I'm driving across as far as I can to go to that because I know I'm hungry for a move of God. And the Lord told me, he said, it will be birthed out of love and out of prayer. And that's what they, that's what they all believe. They believe in love and they believe in prayer. And so they will have a major move of God. I believe it. And um, I've seen the glory cloud. Like I said, I saw a glory cloud coming in there. And people were being healed. When that presence of the Lord comes into that, uh, that auditorium, when this happens, everybody will be healed in that service like that. It's, I'm talking about nothing missing, nothing broken. Shalom. Everybody's whole. Wholeness is coming. And I'm telling you, it's time for an outpouring of the Spirit of the Lord like we've never seen before. And the Lord said, you've talked a lot about the things that are coming that are bad, Brendan. But you need to talk about some of the things that I'm going to do in the glorious outpouring. And, 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 I'm, and, and like I said, he, he told me, he said, I want you to inspire my people. Inspire them. Go back to the basics now. Don't always, you don't have to have a prophetic word every time you come on and do this, this YouTube channel. I want you to teach them prayer and I want you to teach them the word. He said, because that's the balance. You're going to get off if you just go down this road because you don't want to be snared by things, okay? There, it, it's easy to do, folks. You get in the flesh. You, you, and you got, you got to just, you got to have the word as a balance. It's like a teeter-totter. The word is your foundation and it, and it keeps the balance. So we don't get off in, in, in weirdo land. We don't want to be weirdos. We don't want to be, we want to follow the Holy Spirit in our lives in this ministry, in our ministry. And, and what we're doing, what God's called us to do. But the bottom line is, is teaching you how to stand by faith and praying in the Spirit. Because if you don't pray in tongues, I'm telling you, you're missing out. Most people say, well, I don't know how. Stick around. We'll get, we'll get there. We'll get there. You know, it's a lot different when you're doing something on a video than probably what it is if we was in person. But praying in the Spirit. Praying in the Spirit, praying in tongues, getting, uh, stirring yourself up. And, and I thought, what inspires Diane and I? How do we keep going? When it comes to our life and, and uh, all the waves that seem to have knocked us down over the years, uh, what keeps our marriage strong? What keeps our household that as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. But not just do it half cocked barely going but i'm talking about fighting the good fight of faith living by the word standing on the word being being holy ghost filled christians that are not compromising it's like we will not bow and we will not we will not bow and we will not bend our knee to bail we will stand on the word and we will live by faith and not by sight and that's where diane and i we you know i met her in a bible study at, at Jeremy Pearson's Bible study, and that's where I met her, and 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 we've been dating for a long time, uh, since she was 15 years old, mm -hmm. and so we've been together for a long time, and been married for over 20 years. Over 20 years. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. and, but but how we've stayed together, even with mm -hmm. Megan being diagnosed, and everything mm -hmm. is is prayer, yep. and love, mm -hmm. deciding we ain't gonna get out of love. We're gonna, we are going to walk in love and we're going to be together until Jesus comes or we go by graveside. Mm -hmm. I said all the time, you ain't getting rid of me. I, I know I've been a rascal. No. <laughs> I'm not always easy to be with. I can tell you that. Uh, but, but it is what it is. You know, You're we're going to make it. Good. Thanks, hon. I appreciate that. You're but, uh, but I know um, there's a lot of people out there that are believing for things and you're, and you're weary and you're, and you're well-doing. You're, you're getting you're getting weary and not seeing your your manifestation of what you're believing for I want to inspire you today to 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 keep on keeping on when all there else to do is stand stand there for and so you know what inspires Diane and I what keeps us going that's what back it is the word of God won yeah but finding books finding things that fan that flame people who have walked it and I'm telling you, I found, I found, I love this book. I'll, we'll talk about it more in videos to come. But this book right here, the, the, the man who talks with the flowers. Can you see it? Yeah. 
George Washington Carver book. Now he says some, they say some bad words. I don't like the N word, things like that. This is an older book. It's by Glenn Clark. It's by Glenn Clark. Now I, I don't know about this guy. I don't know about him, but I'm talking about the man, the testimony about George Washington Carver. That man, he inspires me. He was a African American man that went through a prejudice and all the stuff, and it was you know hard back then. Okay, but this 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 book talks about how he walked with God and got relationship. things. His relationship mm -hmm. with the Lord, and it, his relationship inspires me. It makes me go. Oh, when you read the pages, I just want to eat it up. You know, it sounds silly, but it's like I, when she, because I don't read real good, y'all. I have learning disabilities. And so my wife has to read to me. That's why she's here a lot is about this stuff, because she reads to me and it's, it, it ministers to me. That's her gift to me a lot is she reads to me in the car when we're going places. I love to read. Yeah, she <laughs> reads books. She reads how many books a year probably? Oh, my goodness. At least, usually at least 50. Yeah. At least 50, I can bragger 20, bragger it depends on how long the book is. i'm teasing <laughs> you but she she does she she can read a book in a day if she tries or no, it, it's nothing but i but it i was on how many distractions <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> but uh but i but there's there's this these pages in this book are just uh, you know, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not, I don't try to, I'm just telling y'all. There's certain things that just, just stir me up and I get a hold of it and I go, man, I want, I want more. Could you just read it again? It's, it's the pureness of his relationship with the Lord. Yes. And it's, the, it's simple and it's pure and the simplicity of it is what makes it beautiful. Yeah. You know, it doesn't have to be complicated. You know, yeah. and, all, and, and a, lot, a lot of times people try to make it complicated, you know. What? Their relationship with God, that he's He's real to you. Just in this, it doesn't have to be complicated, it's simple. Yeah, mm -hmm. simple. I think it's mm -hmm. like a child. Mm -hmm. But we try to be Christian adults. Instead of coming to God like a child, he said, he said mm -hmm. to be a child. And, and, and I believe with all my heart, this man, the way he talks about getting up, believing God for a pocket knife, there's so many amazing stories. And Diana can read some of this sometime. I want to do it on another video. But, but what inspires you? What inspires you? What fans your flame? Mm -hmm. And it's just, um, it's, it's books like this. And, and, and a healing testimony of uh, Azusa Street. There is a Miracles of Azusa Street. I've been reading that, and and I and I like to have it played. And Diana will read it to me. And True stories of the miracles of Azusa Street. True stories of a miracles of Azusa Street. I thought if he did it once, he'll do it again. God's no respecter of persons, and he did it with Azusa Street. And he said, "Greater works will we going to do?" And I'm telling you, I've seen a great revival coming. I've seen that glory cloud coming into these services, like I'm talking about. And I'm telling you all, beyond a shadow of a doubt, I know it's going to happen again. One last call. One last put. One last call. If you all truly realize how much Jesus loves you, He oozes love. He is, he is more than what you'll ever comprehend in your natural mind. The love of who he truly is and what, what, what God is love and how much he loves you. People say, you've never seen a man cry so much. And I say, I've been touched by the Father multiple times. And it changes you. It makes you soft, and it make, takes that old heart away from you when you get that underneath that presence is, and that, that ooze baptize you in love. He, he'll dunk you in love. Wash you up, dunk you again. Wash you up, dunk you again. Wash you up. And, I, and it, when you keep renewing yourself with the love of God, you cry a lot. It sounds like a sissy, but... I, mm -hmm. But it changed me. And I had these visitations. And he tells me, like when I had 
two nights ago. I was on a ladder and I was just painting and, and uh, the Holy Spirit stirred in me so hard. I thought, where is this coming from? I'm just painting. Uh, no, I wasn't even painting. I was re re putting a new light up. Mm -hmm. I was putting a new light up. And the presence of the Lord hit me on the ladder. I, I was so overtaken by the Spirit of the Lord. I, I, I felt like I was going to fall off the ladder. I had to get down off the ladder because the presence of the Lord hit me so hard and prophetic. And he started talking to me. And I saw, I saw again mm -hmm. what's coming. But this time he showed me the devil. And I saw all the principalities and all the legions of devils behind him. And they were at attention. But this time they were looking at the Father. And they knew their time was up on this earth. They knew their time of judgment had come. And the glorious fire, the glorious light that was shining from the Father's throne was blinding. It was blinding. It was so bright, I couldn't look at it. I was, it, I could look in the spirit, and I was trying to look, but I saw Satan, and he was cowered down like a, like he was hunkered down looking at the ground, but he was looking up at that light, and I could see into the depth of him of how much hate, how much anger, and how vicious and vile he truly is. The rebellion that's truly in him, but in that he knew his time was up, and the, and the sun had set on him humanity it was the sun the sun had set the sun has set y'all i'm telling you jesus is coming jesus is coming and the sun is setting and if your heart is not right you're gonna get left you will spend eternity in hell you have got to get your heart right before the father right now if you're not right for him and you're all walking on the fence, woe unto you. I tell you, I tell you again. I've seen it again. And the Lord showed me another part of this. And I saw Satan cowering down. He was melted down and he had this cloak around him. But he could not stand the glory. He could not stand the presence of God. He was melting down like a fool. He is. Because he turned his back on the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He was bowed down. And then I saw the principalities and the powers and all the darkness behind him. And, and, and this may sound strange, but this is the way I perceived it when I saw it. That they were concerned for their self. They realized their time was up. I could see their face. They looked worried. And that may say, well, how do they have emotion? I'm just telling you all. They look in fear. They feared him. They knew they made the wrong choice by following the devil. They know they've made the wrong choice, but their day of judgment is coming. And there will be a day when every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and even those devils. They're all going to bow, I'm telling you. The, the day's coming. Judgment's coming. And the devils in hell are going to tremble they're going to tremble. They're tremble. They tremble at the name of Jesus. They tremble at the glory. And I'm telling you, as you walk in with the blood and the fire and the glory, they tremble because it's in you. But I'm telling you, we're at a different place in time. We're at a different place in time. And we are about to step over into our glorified bodies. And we're going to rule and reign for, with him forever and ever. And I'm telling you all, I'm telling you, you don't want to miss out on this. The glorious church, the glorious outpouring that we're about to, to have. But I could see those devil's faces and they look concerned for themselves and they need to be because there's no turning back. It's like that Carmen video, Satan bite the dust. Satan bite the dust. Yeah, <laughs> it's right. I watched it as a kid. Yeah, Satan bite the dust. But it was just amazing to see even they know that the that the, the time they know in the spirit that the sun is is setting mm -hmm. and it's going down and the and we're in the in this dispensation they know of grace their future. yeah they know their future that's what the bible says if the devil reminds you of your past just remind him of his future mm -hmm. we talk about that yep. satan you're going to burn in hell forever mm -hmm. it's coming your day's coming they know it's coming they know the sun is coming down and they know their judgments at hand and they're scared of it themselves. 
I'm telling you, I saw the fear in their face. They're scared. They they were looking at the glory, and they were they were going, uh oh, uh oh. And I and I'm just telling y'all, there. This is part of it, and I'll tell y'all this. I can say this. I saw a major move of God coming to Hollywood. I saw a major move of God coming to not used to be celebrities. I'm talking about celebrities that are famous now. A major move of God coming to the celebrities that are A-listers now. And I'm talking from the Justin Beavers, all of that. I'm talking about a new group of people. I'm talking about, but radically searching for some, because the Lord showed me some of them. And he said, Brandon, they're hurting. They're, they're, they're seeking, they're thirsty, they're, they're wanting more. And, but, but they don't know how to get there, but they're going to come. And I saw a major move of God in some major celebrities. And they're going to have great influence in bringing others to the kingdom of God because of the fact of their celebrity. People follow people. But, but I'm telling you, it's going to be all for the glory of God. Amen. And there's going to be a move exactly. even in Hollywood. Even in Hollywood. Some of the most liberal people that you think, they're never kind of, they're all going to hell. I'm telling you, God's going to touch even the hardest One people. Call. One last call. He's going to touch even some of the hardest people. So, okay, well, I, I'll get off on that. I'll just, I'll, 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 I want to read this beautiful testimony about a healing that took place at Azusa Street that really blessed me because it's a kid that just needed something, mm -hmm. you know? It's a little girl, it sounded like, and she just needed a healing. But it was it was something, and the Lord told me, he said, Brandon, I want my people to believe for bigger. Believe big. He'll do exceedingly abundantly above all that we dare ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. I'm telling you all, it's time to believe God for bigger in these last days. But this is a testimony that happened, and Diana's going to read it to you. This is a testimony that happened at Azuzu Street for some, some child that needed a miracle, okay? So listen to this. This will bless you. It inspires you. Um, the, okay, so it says, this, this next story she told me was of a child whose second teeth grew in rotten and black from the start. The mother asked, will God heal this? Lucille said, God will heal anything, and I love praying for teeth. Lucille brought the girl over to her and asked others to get a handkerchief and a cup. Lucille took the handkerchief and laid it over the child's mouth. She prayed, and then a handful of blackened teeth just dropped out of the girl's mouth and into the cup. Can you imagine what this, uh, what that this girl is thinking as this little woman is taking out her teeth? Completely toothless, the child just kept looking at her. Lucille told her, now Jesus is going to give you a new set of teeth and we're going to have fun getting them in there. She went through the child's whole mouth, pressed on her gums, and teeth grew in one at a time. She could have them all done at one time, but Lucille wanted to play. Hmm. That little girl's teeth grew in perfectly. Did it hurt when the rotten teeth were coming out, I asked? Lucille said the child felt nothing. However, when the new Jesus teeth came in, the little girl said it kind of tickled. I just sat there shaking my head. Even though her descriptions of the teeth often cause my stomach to turn, I sat in awe at the miracle she described. She would ask me, Tommy, wouldn't you love to see those kind of healings in our services today? And I would just nod in agreement. What impressed Sister Lucille was that the miracles were not confined to Brother Seymour. She would comment, a little bitty woman like me could walk up and command a leg to grow out and it would grow out. A busted wrist would grow back together. Rotten teeth would be replaced with brand new teeth and missing teeth would grow back in. I asked her if she ever worked with someone who had all his teeth missing. She said, no, I never tried that. I teasingly said, well, you should have. She rebu rebukingly replied, I just never tried that, Brother Tommy. I would meekly change the subject and ask her to describe what the Shekinah glory was like. Mm. She would get such joy in her eyes as she told me how much she loved to be in the center of the mist light cloud. She was so little in stature, she would sit this down. This is the cloud I'm talking about. Uh -huh. It's going to happen at the Sister Shekinah Billy's. The Shekinah glory cloud. This is, this is going to happen there at Azuzu. So, sorry to cut you off, babe. I, uh, but that's going to happen again. Woo. 
That gets me excited. So read, read, read about that glory cloud again. Okay. I, w I would meekly cha change the subject and ask her to describe what the Shekinah glory was like. She would get su such joy in her eyes as she told me how much she loved to be in the center of the mist-like cloud. She was so little in stature. She would sit down in it, and when it was thick, the mist was about up to her neck. Like a kid, she would have fun and play in the mist. She oh. would often lie down, breathing it in. She could feel the energy of it and described that it was like pure oxygen being breathed into her lungs. She could smell it too. The scent was like lilacs to her. Others said it smelled like roses. The aroma depended on what part of the building you were in at the time. When Brother Seymour was there and they would sing in the spirit, Sister Lucille told me that the Shekinah glory would just rise and fill the whole room and you could just breathe so much better. Do you see... I, isn't that amazing to hear about mm -hmm. a little child's teeth coming back in their head like that? Yeah. And 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 when the, it was it was already her, her permanent teeth, her adult teeth that fell out and pulled out, and God grew her some new ones. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, we are about to see some of the greatest manifestations and demonstrations of the glory we've ever could Praise we could God. ever that i'm talking megan excited. megan is going to be radically healed I believe it. i'm expecting it yeah i believe it megan my baby is going to be radically healed i believe with all my heart that she will come on here and tell you all of what jesus did for her and it will be a sign to the world that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if he healed the sick back then, he's still healing the sick today. And I believe with all my heart. There, there is a move of God that we're about to see, y'all. But I'm trying to inspire you to believe for bigger. That, that, that you go back and this is how you do it. This is how I keep myself afloat. I find things make, like this. You make the word work. You find scripture. Yes, you find scripture. I read these testimonies. I read them over and I find things about angels or whatever I can find to, to stir myself up. And, and I have a read it to me in the car. Brother Hagen's books, uh, Kenneth E. Hagen. I listen to her talk about the love uh, book and uh, prophetic book about the callings. And just listening to it over and over and over. And I tell her, I say, read it again. We got to read it again. You know, faith because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And there's a lot of scripture in those books. And so, you know, she's reading the scriptures to me too. So I just, I hope that encouraged you all today. I, um, I know it was kind of just off, uh, just a video, but I don't know. I just try to be real with folks. That's I don't always exciting. try to be super religious. I just want to be real and just talk about Jesus and just, I love it. we're just, we're just, we're just people. We're just, we have fun. We enjoy life. Yeah. There's challenges. Yeah. Yeah. There, there's, 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 there's trials, but, but God is faithful and he's been faithful to us and he keeps providing. He takes care of us. We live by faith, not by sight. That's how we do it. It's how we do our eBay business. We sell on eBay and Poshmark and we just work together and, and, uh, just, you know, Keep on keeping on. Mm -hmm. But this is how we do it. And I just wanted to kind of show you all. And this is a testimony about a brother that had a visitation from Jesus. And uh, we won't reveal his name. But he had an amazing visitation from Jesus. And I want to read this to you. Because I know there's some things that Lord, that some people send me, no disrespect, that I know it's flesh. And it, and I'm like, because my spirit don't jive with it. It's like, uh, it ain't. but this one... I was like, this I know because of the way Jesus acted. I know because I this is the way he acts towards me. I've had now nine open-eyed visions, two face-to-face -face with Jesus himself. And I'm telling you all, this is legit. Okay, so I want you to... I want you to, to hear this. This will bless you as we close, okay? And I'm going to pray for you all, okay? Okay. Um, he says, back in February, I had an encounter with the Lord. I was praying early in the morning, sitting at my kitchen table. My eyes were closed. I was just emptying myself out to God, offering everything up to him. A scene opened in my mind. I was high up in the air, looking down at the ground below. I was looking at myself lying in a green field of tall grass next to a stream of water. 
I was lying on my left side curled up and my feet were towards the water. I saw this for a moment or two and then I was in my body lying in the grass. My eyes were open and I was looking at the grass next to my face. Everything was bright like a sunny day. I looked at the grass for only a moment when I saw a head and shoulders come into view. I knew who he was immediately. The Lord walked right up to me and reached out his right hand and said, come on, get up, it's time to work. I reached up my hand to his and, and said, yes, Lord. He helped me stand up. He turned around and walked back the way he had come and I just went with him. He was the same height as I am. He was wearing simple white robes belted at the waist, almost like work clothes that a man would wear. His he has dark skin, long hair, and dark beard. I can't remember exactly what his face looked like. The stream was on our right, and we walked next to it for a little ways. We were in a massive open place of soft hills as far as I could see. Some trees here and there, and these little dark spots all over the hills in the distance. He stopped walking and sweeping with his right arm across the view in front of us, he said, I own the cattle on a thousand hills. Even more, Lord, I said, and then I knew those spots were cattle. He kept looking ahead and said in a very thoughtful way, I need someone to look after them. Yes, Lord, I said. He turned and looked at me in the eyes and said, I need a cowboy. I got all choked up and said, you've got one, Lord. The Lord turned back to the view ahead and said again in a thoughtful way, a cowboy needs a horse. I didn't even think about it before I replied, even a string of horses, Lord. And that made him smile and he said, true. Then he kind of turned and walked past in front of me saying something that for some reason I can't re really recall exactly, but it was basically, now let's go, it's time to work. The vision ended there, just faded into black, and I opened my eyes, and I was back in my kitchen chair. I've been thinking about this conversation over and over for months. This experience is the third or fourth time over the last few years that God has communicated something to me about his plans for me in the near future. I have some inkling of what all it means, but no more than that. I just wanted to share this with you. I know you won't scoff at me or give me a hard time. At first, I thought something was going to happen like the next day or next couple of days, but it's been a few months and I'm calmer about it now. Still excited and waiting, but calmer. So that's my story. Blessings to our God and blessings to you. Thank you if you read this. And then we replied and, of course, and told him it, that it blessed us. And if we asked if we could share it, and he said we could. So It was, it was beautiful. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I just, I love stuff like that. It's it's the way that Jesus communicates. He's such a friend. But it's more than that. It's the way he loves back. And every single time, his love is just overwhelming. It's just like he said, a, uh, every cowboy needs a horse. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the way he talks. It's just, it's, I know it's the Lord. It's the way he talks about things and just the way he says it to me. And it's just like I go, ah, oh, I look for the day when, when we spend eternity with him. Going from galaxy to galaxy and the universes and all of it. You know, the, the, the creation that he's created for us. The beauty of, of the heavens. Mm -hmm. The beauty of, of our, our mansion on a hill. All the things that he's done for us in love. Died for us. Did all but he prepared a place for us. And if you don't... If you don't know him. And you don't have a revelation of who he is. Today's your day. I believe... With all my heart, Jesus died for you. And he's calling one last call for you. Will you bow your knee to Jesus today? And, and, and enter into that and having your name written into the Lamb's Book of Life. I believe there's not a, there's, there's some of you, this is your last day on earth. This is your last day. You may be elderly, you may be not. If you were to die tonight in your sleep, or in a car wreck, or something tragic, where would you spend eternity? Would you spend it in heaven? In paradise? 
or in the devil's hell with him. Hell was not made for you. It was made for Satan. But you choosing not to follow Jesus, which is so simple, you, you chose hell, basically. Just like the devil chose to follow and go to hell by being who he was. You choose. Do you choose Jesus today? Do you believe he died on the cross for you? I know I do. And it's real easy to say a simple prayer with me. If you say, hey, I want him. I want Jesus as my Lord and personal Savior. It's not hard. He's waiting there with his arms wide open saying, come on in. I have a place for you too. He loves you. And he wants to, you to be in his house. He wants to provide. A, he loves. He wants you. He wants you. You say, me, I've messed up so much. I got so much. I've been bad. I've murdered. I've killed. I've done all this bad stuff. He'll never forgive me. He said, if you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. There's not one sin that's too big for Jesus to forgive. He'll forgive it all. And he will write your name in that Lamb's Book of Life if you just confess your sins before him today. And say this prayer with me. It's, it's not don't have to be all religious. Say, Jesus, I'm a sinner. Write my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. I believe you are the Son of God. Forgive me of my sins, Lord. I want to come to you and come home. Thank you, Lord, that you've set me free from sin, sickness, and disease. And I don't have to have it anymore because you took it on the cross for me. I believe you're the Son of God. Thank you, Lord, Thank you, Lord. That, you forgive me of my sins. that you forgive me of my sins. Simple. Now just get in the Word. Find the Bible. Start reading it at Genesis. Find something you understand. It doesn't have to be all religious, but find something that ministers to you. Go to a Bible-believing church like I'm talking about. John Kilpatrick, Pastor Chip, Bram at Glorious Church. There is a lot of good churches out there. You find a good Bible-believing church and start going and volunteering, getting getting involved, and just get plugged in. And if, if you fall down again in sin, you pick yourself back up. We don't keep trying to practice sin, but we do mess up. But God is able to forgive us of that too as we confess it and we keep going on. Now let's believe God for your miracle. Whatever it may be, it may be cancer, it may be you be dying from something incurable, but I know this, that Jesus Christ is a healer and he'll heal your body too. If he healed the woman with the issue of blood and her faith made her whole, your faith can make you whole. Remember, Jesus said, daughter, your faith has made you whole. Read that over and over and over again. She reached up and grabbed the hem of his garment. And blind Bartimaeus, Jesus, have mercy on me. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Today is your day for your miracle. He's no respecter of persons. And I believe with all my heart, it's time for you to receive your miracle today. And I'm going to believe with you right now. So whatever it may be, I don't have to call it out. It's not Holy Ghost lottery calling out, well, he didn't call out my healing, so I'm not going to get it. Well, he didn't call out what my ailment of what I'm overcoming, so I can't have it. No, you reach up by faith and grab it yourself and say, no, I have it now. So we're going to believe right now. It don't matter what it, how big it is. Hang now to something huge. Believe for it. Believe for the impossible, okay? So, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I believe with them that every single thing from the top of their head to the soles of their feet, they're healed and whole and well in the mighty name of Jesus. We speak to the mountain and we tell it to be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. And we don't doubt in our hearts, Lord. You said we'd have whatsoever things we saith. 
I believe right now in the name of Jesus for sickness and disease to depart from their bodies. We command it. We speak to the mountain of sickness and disease. We speak to the mountain of cancer. We say, cancer, go now in Jesus' name. Diabetes, go now in Jesus' name. We call new pancreas, new hearts, new livers, new, new brains, new whatever you may ha ha need. It does not matter. It's not, it, nothing's too big. We call your eyes, brand new eyes, eyesight, be healed in Jesus' name. Restoration of the eye and the iris and all the things in the eye. I call eye restoration healed and whole and well and the power of the Holy Ghost to go through you. I call your ears to open right now in Jesus' name. Open. Open brand new eardrums, brand new hearing all throughout the ear. We call healing over those ears right now in Jesus' name. I call from strokes. I just saw this over somebody who just had a stroke. And you, you have any kind of paralyzed in your face and the damage in the brain. I call healing over that brain and over that face right now in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, that there is all kinds of growths and, and, and things that are attached and growths and cancers and tumors and diabetes, all things that, that are related to, to, to things that are attached to growths. I call them to go now in Jesus' name. You dry, dry up, shrivel up, and go away. Father, we thank you, Lord, for restoration in the colon. I call colon cancer to be healed. Healing in the colon right now in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, for the healings in the colon. We call restoration of the colon, restoration of the bowels, restoration of the stomach, restoration of the gallbladders, restoration of the livers, over pancreas, over all of it, thyroids, healing of thyroids in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you, Lord. Right now, I call healing in kidneys, over the bladder, over the pain, over the over the spleen, over over. Father, I thank you, Lord, that the prostates are healed. And man, Father, we call healing over the prostate, over ovaries, over the uteruses. I call healing over it for children to come forth. I call that they would not have any more miscarriages. Father, I thank you, Lord, that their vine will not cast fruit before its time that they'll have full-term healthy pregnancies. I thank you, Lord, for restoration of their uterus and over the womb of these women that are believing for children, for the seed from the husband, Father, that their, their body will produce, their testicles will produce everything that they need, Father, to be able to have a baby. We call restoration over them in Jesus' name, that children will come forth a, an inheritance, a godly inheritance, a children are the inheritance of the Lord, and I thank you, Lord, for the beautiful, brand new children, brand new babies coming forth in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, for all that. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that they're bringing their heart's desire to have children. And the ones that are lost, the wayward children, we call them home. For we train up a child in the way they will go, and when they get older, they will not depart from it. I thank you, Lord. We train them up in the word. We train them up, godly children, right now. And we thank you, Lord, for rest restoration. Oh, I saw this, breast cancers. I curse breast cancer. I command breast cancer, you go now in Jesus' name. We call healing over those breasts right now from any lumps or bumps or whatever it may be. We call restoration over in, in the lymph nodes. I call restoration in the lymph nodes. Healing over the lymph nodes right now in Jesus' name. Complete deliverance from this. Nothing missing, nothing broken. Growing back new tissue. All of it be whole and healed and well in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you, Lord, for even uh, gum cancers and throat cancers and things like that to be completely healed. Gum disease of the teeth, rotten teeth, and infection of the mouth. We thank you, Lord, that it's healed and whole and well in Jesus' name. Father, we give you all the glory, honor, and praise. 
Oh, celiac disease. I heard the Lord just say celiac. I call it celiac, celiac, celiac disease. Healed and whole and well in Jesus' name. From, from, from gluten intolerance. Healed and whole and well in Jesus' name. And Father, I thank you, Lord, that you're restor restoring marriages. Restoring marriages. Marriages are brought back to you. And, 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 and they're, they're, uh, uh, they're rekindling the love. Choosing to walk in love with one another. Father, I thank you, Lord, for peace over that home. Peace that passes all understanding. And we believe for great financial breakthrough in Jesus' name. For all the houses represented here. For creative ideas to get wealth. That they have more overflow than they've ever seen in their life. Father, there'll not be nothing missing, nothing broken in their lives today. And we thank you, Father, for it. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise. And everybody say amen and amen. Well, I believe it. I believe in the word. And I believe that he, he came and he set the captives free. If you believe it today. Well... If you could, I have my little subscribe pillow. Please subscribe to our channel. We're doing things a little different. The Lord said, "Go back to the begin. Go back to the basics. Teach my people how to pray and inspire them. Be encouraged today. We want you to be encouraged. We're excited you're here. We hope this video blessed you. Uh, it blessed us. Remember, Billy Brim's conference is in October. It's October the 16th to like the 21st." It will really bless you if you want to come and see beautiful fall colors for the fall leaves, for the fall season. It's coming. It's uh, two months away, I believe. And that conference is going to be a real blessing. I've always watched online, but this will be the first time I've ever got to go and, and, and participate in this conference. It's coming. We're real excited about going and, and, and getting refreshed. So I encourage you all, if you are in the uh, Branson City Missouri area, and you want to go and, and be a part of this October the 16th to the 21st, her conference is coming, and they're going to teach on prayer, and they teach you how to get in the glory. They teach you about the blood. They teach you about the glory. They teach you about all kinds of wonderful things, and so I just want to encourage you all to go and help her uh, fill that auditorium up for all for the glory of God. It would be a blessing, like I said. It would be beautiful fall weather, y'all. It's beautiful fall weather in October here in uh, the South. And so, uh, you know, if you're around here, the leaves turn, and it's a lot of, it's in the Ozarks, and the beautiful leaves in the Ozarks. So, well, we just want to say thank you for joining us. God bless you all. Put a smile on your face and a song in your heart. Jesus loves you so much, and we love you. God bless you all, and have a wonderful day, and we'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.